Now I'd like to tell you a scary story. So if you're home alone, make sure the doors are locked, the windows are closed and locked, and maybe turn on a light and grab a blanket. Because we're going to talk about a story about Big Nose George Parrot. Big Nose George Parrot wasn't a good man. He made a lot of stupid decisions in his life. And I think the first one was where he decided he was going to rob a man of his horse. Now, back in the 1800s, that's something you just don't do. You never take a man's horse. Well, he did, but he got acquitted. And that made him pretty happy. I think it gave him a little bit of courage because he started robbing the stagecoach. Travelers would travel through Wyoming by stagecoach. And it was real easy pickings for him to stop the stagecoach, rob the travelers, get a little spend of money, and move on to the next stagecoach. Well, he did this and got pretty confident. Then he decided there needed to be more money. So he then focused on the Union Pacific Railroad. Now, Big Nose George got a gang together, and they decided they were going to rob the Union Pacific Railroad on the day that they attached the payroll car. Once a month, Union Pacific would attach a special secure car that carried the payroll to pay all the employees that worked with the Union Pacific and also other people would put money on that payroll car to make it to the places where they needed the money to pay people for the services they were doing. Well, Big Nose George and his gang, they found the right little place. They went and they took a spike out from one of the rails. Then they wired up some bobbed wire around that rail and pulled it on over so that at the exact right time, they could just yank as hard as they could on that bob wire and move that rail just enough to derail the whole train and then easily go and rob the payroll car. Well, they weren't the smartest men alive. There were people that worked on those rails and some of the Union Pacific workers noticed that there'd been some tampering done. They reported that back to headquarters. Headquarters sent a telegraph to the Carbon County Sheriff. The security man from the Union Pacific mounted a horse. The sheriff got on his horse, and they headed to find out who had been tampering with the Union Pacific Railroad. Well, as they came to the spot where it had been reported the tampering was done, Big Nose George and his gang, who'd been hanging out, waiting for the right time for when the train would come, saw the sheriff, saw the lawmen coming, and hurried and jumped on their horses and headed up to Rattlesnake Canyon. Well, it happened. There was a major big shootout. There were a lot more gang members than there were lawmen. And they shot both of those lawmen dead, except the sheriff was just severely wounded, wasn't completely dead, and Big Nose George and his gang just left him there to die in the cold, Wyoming cold, all alone in the darkness. You didn't do that. That was a bad thing to do. The people of Wyoming were not happy with Big Nose George. Big Nose George and his gang, they knew they better leave town. So they headed off to Montana, someplace in Montana. Well, as people do, Big Nose George and a couple of his gang members were at a bar in Montana, and they were drinking. And they were enjoying their drink, and they were getting a little drunk. And they started to bragging. And they were bragging about 
how they had killed two lawmen in Wyoming. How they had left them there in the cold Wyoming night to lie. People in the bar didn't like that at all. You don't leave another human being to die out in the wilderness. Not a wounded man. Well, they sent a telegraph to the Union Pacific, and the Union Pacific sent a telegraph off to Carbon County, and the new sheriff quickly arrived in Montana. By the time he got there, he could only get Big Nose George. Grab Big Nose George, accompanied him all the way back to Rollins, Wyoming, where he was going to stand trial because he was accused of killing a man. Now, lawn back then, not too much different than lawn right now. There were several months of trials. First, Big Nose George said he was guilty. And then he said, I'm not guilty. And then he said, I'm guilty. And then I'm not guilty. And this went on for several months. And finally, Big Nose was accused and convicted for the murder of Carbon County Sheriff. Big Nose sat in the jail waiting. In those days when you killed a man and you were found guilty, you were hung. Well, the verdict was in and they were just waiting. Big Nose knew he had to get out of there. Somehow he'd gotten a knife or a saw or something. And when no one was in the jail, he was frantically working at those shackles on his ankles. He'd managed to get those cut off. And the very night that the um, jailer came in to give Big Nose his dinner, when he walked in the cell, Big Nose bent down, grabbed those shackles, and slammed them into the head of the jailer, who immediately fell flat to the ground, blood gushing out of his head. Just at that very moment, the jailer's wife walked in, saw Big Nose hanging over the top of her husband, with him laying on the floor with blood, a wound in his head. She hurried. She slammed that front door. She ran outside, grabbed her pistol, and shot it into the air several times. People in the town came running. She was screaming, Big Nose George, he's hit my husband. He's laying on the floor. He's in a pool of blood. Everyone in town knew that Big Nose George had killed their sheriff. They knew he was a convicted man. It was time for a lynching. Everyone gathered quickly. The news spread. The town area was filling with people. Someone grabbed a rope. Someone went into the jail, dragged Big Jim out, grabbed that rope, wrapped it around his head. Someone pulled an empty whiskey barrel, pulled it up to the side of the building. They put that noose on, tied around Big George's neck. They cinched it up tight. They threw that rope up and over the top and pulled it down. Then they secured it to a pole. And then someone ran up and kicked that barrel out. The rope snapped. Big nose fell to the ground. The people are screaming. Big nose is on his knees and he's crying. He's saying, please, 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 just shoot me. Don't hang me. Just shoot me now. Get it over with. But people, they are ready. It's been way too long. And he needs to pay the price. Another rope is found. He's strung up and he's hung. He dances for a little bit and people are applauding and clapping. Everyone's happy to see the big nose is finally dead. In fact, they're so happy that he's dead, they leave his body to hang there for three days. So the story goes. Union Pacific had their own physician and surgeon, Dr. McGee. 
The county had their own surgeon, Dr. Osborne. Those two gentlemen were assigned to take the body. Now, Dr. Osborne, he wanted something different. He had big nose George skinned, took the skin, had a pair of shoes made out of human skin, big nose George's skin to be in fact, and had those shoes made to fit his feet. Later, Dr. Osborne became a governor of Wyoming, and to his special occasion where he was put in as the governor, he wore those shoes. The shoes with the human skin of Big Nose George. Now, Dr. McGee, on the other hand, this is where it gets scary. Dr. McGee wants to study the mind and the brain of the criminally insane. So he takes the body. He has a lovely young assistant Lillian, and they began to study his brain. They cut the skull open, take the top skull cap off, and he hands that to his lovely assistant Lillian. This is her little token for helping. He then performs several tests and examines and studies the brain and runs many tests and keeps Big nose George's brain and body, so to speak, for several months. Eventually, that lovely assistant Lillian becomes the first female physician in Wyoming. And she still has that top of big nose George's skull. Dr. McGee takes the rest of the body, puts it in a old empty whiskey barrel and puts the bottom half of his skull in, seals it up and secretly buries it so no one knows where Big Nose George gets buried. The story doesn't end there. In 1950, in downtown Rawlings, when they're excavating for a new building, the excavators come across a whiskey barrel Stories have been told about Big Nose George. Would this be his barrel where he's inside? They open up the barrel and they see human remains, human bones, with just the bottom of the skull. Immediately, Dr. Lillian Heath's husband is called and brought back to Rollins, Wyoming, where they put two pieces of the skull back together. A perfect fit. Briefly, Big Nose George is reunited with the top of his head, but only shortly. Now, this is where the strange gets stranger. If you dare, if you're not afraid, make a trip to Rollins, Wyoming, to the Carbon County Museum. Go inside, and there you'll see the skull cap and the shoes that Governor Osborne wore, made from the human skin of Big Nose George.